guys and welcome to Knicker. In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick, really quick, easy project that you can do with your leftover faux fur yarn. I'm really excited with how this turned out. I kind of just did it on a whim because I saw something similar to this with the velvet yarn on Pinterest, but I found this faux fur version and I really love how it works. Basically, we're taking some hair ties and elastics. I have some really thick ones here, but you can also very easily use these little thinner ones and we're just going to crochet around with some faux fur yarn. So let's go ahead and go towards what we will need. So for this project, you will need, I'm using Yarn Bee for the moment in soft pink. I also kind of went overboard and bought a bunch of different colors, but in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using the soft pink color. It's $5.99 at Hobby Lobby, but you can use a 40% off coupon, which is always on their app. So I always do that when I can. Sometimes their yarn goes 30% off, but again, $5.99 is kind of a steep price, but it, this will make a bunch of scrunchies. So you don't have to really super duper worry about like the overall cost basically, especially if you get a 40% off coupon. So I'm using this and of course I'm using scrunchies. I actually went to the Dollar Tree to see if they had any white scrunchies because I thought the white might look a little less obvious underneath the different yarns. It's not super duper obvious, like here you can't even tell with the darker tone and you can just barely tell with the cream. It doesn't super duper matter, I was just being super OCD. But you can get them at do the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using these ones that I found. So I'm going to be using either the tan looking ones or the blur like the blue and the white looking ones so the multicolor. I'm gonna put those underneath the ones that I'm working on for the rest of these so I'm going to be doing that this was a dollar for 36 of them so again it is very cost effective especially if you're going to be doing just a little gift if these little metal tabs bother you they have ones that are just straight up elastics I bought just a bunch they also had these really cool jumbo elastics which I thought would be really cool I'm probably gonna crochet one off camera and show people what it looks like and if they like that then they can know to get the jumbo ones these are also clasp free which I don't like the clasp ones generally because they get caught in my hair. I have really thick hair and that bothers me. So you're going to need your elastics, your faux fur yarn. You're also going to need a crochet hook. I'm using my quarantine kit furls crochet hook. It's this beautiful marbly one. I'm doing it in a size I. You can use anything really. Just follow what the back of your skein says. This skein calls for an M but honestly, that's really big. But if you're having a harder time, then all by all means, go for it. I go for smaller ones so that the like back of the elastic is not showing as much. The smaller your hook, the smaller your stitch. So if you want this to look a little bit fluffier, you can do that. I'm just gonna go around twice with mine just to make it so that it will be a bit thicker if I want it to be thicker. So again, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so since I've done my what you will need thing, I found more at another store. I found more hair ties at another store. This was in my in-town store where I have to go like 20 minutes to go into town, basically, and I love all the different colors. I'm actually going to save these because what I found out while I was making all five million of these little hair ties is what I prefer doing them with is these jumbo elastics. They're huge and I love how they look. I ended up doing all of these with an eight pack right here of all the black that I have. And I've already shown that before, but today we're using this pink yarn. So I'm gonna show it with this pink elastic. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna put this down here and move everything out of the way. And I believe this one is done with the pink because as you can see, you can't, well, as you can't see, you can't really see what the elastics color is as well as when you get one that has like black on the inside. So it's not a big deal. You can't really see it regardless as you pull it out, unless you really stretch it out and you're trying to figure out what the color of it is. But I like being a perfectionist. So I found some in the pink color range as well. I'm gonna move everything out of the way. Okay, so what we do to start this is we're gonna take our yarn and I like to create a tail that's at least the width of my hair tie stretched. So the longer your tail, the better on this one. So I'm going to pull this all the way so that it's like a good 12 inch tail. And then I also go along where it joins here. So this little plasticky bit, we're going to double knot it onto our hair tie. So just tie a simple square knot one and then go and 
too. Just try to make it nice and taut so it's not too, too bad. And now if you want to test it out, you can see that it is definitely going to go around. The reason why we make our tail so long is we're going to work our tail as if it is a piece of our hair tie going around. This helps add to the thickness of the hair tie as well as hiding your tails, which is a very important part of this project. I like to hide my tails, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to move this all out of the way and we're going to now take our eye or whatever size you find comfortable with hook and I'm going to put it on the underside of my little tie here. I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it under and then I'm going to chain one. So I just did a little slip stitch there. You can pull on your tail as you go, but my tail is now in the center of that stitch and I've started my work. And essentially, we're just going to single crochet around the entire thing. That's what makes it easy about this is even though you can't see your stitches, you kind of just have to intuitively know one wrap and loop through both. You can't see your stitches for anything. What I like to do is I like to do some single crochets before I pull on my tail too, too much. So I'm going to do about six stitches total and then I'm going to tug. So four total, five total, and six. And about every six to like ten stitches, I'm going to pull on my tail and then I'm going to pull on my work. And this kind of makes it roll and bunches it up so that it's when you do eventually slip stitch off of this, it will be a little less likely to show. So we're just gonna keep going until it is completely covered in stitches. We're just gonna single crochet. And that's essentially all I'm doing for this entire project. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to make it more slouchy. So more of the scrunch style. I still used the jumbo elastics for these ones, but I'm going to show how it all bunches up on itself and it's very easy to do this. So I just wanted to do two separate ones just to keep them nice and neat and separate from one another. But you can do this same general idea with this. It's just a lot harder to do it with the fur yarn because you can't see your stitches and you have to kind of figure it out by feel more than anything. So we're just gonna keep going around and around. These don't take that long to make at all. So if you just have some little bit of your project left of some faux yarn. So I'm just going to tuck on my tail there, tug on my work, make it so it's all bunched up. If you just have some like little bit of an end of what it is, like a couple of like, well, like 20 to 30 yards of this type of yarn, like say you have some left over from your Santa or your gnome or your just hat that you made from my last tutorial, this would be a great buster like a, a pile buster for you to kill your skein and not have to think about it and it'd be a great gift for a little one or for somebody who really likes that rustic faux fur aesthetic i have a couple people that are on my list that these are going to but i can imagine this would look adorable as like a little ponytail it'd be really cute so we're just gonna keep single crocheting around and around and keeping in mind that my tail has been as a part of my hair tie this entire time. And we're only about halfway through because every time I tug, a little bit more of the hair tie comes out and that is perfectly okay. That's my big tip when it comes to making these is you tug and you tug until, like you don't want it so pulled that it becomes bunched up, but you want it so pulled that it is covering your hair tie essentially. And I love just how fluffy it looks. It's very fun to make one of these, especially if you just have some ends here. These again are like just a buck for a big old handful of them. You can get eight of these and either get the colors that you want or you can get black. If like say with these ones, if you got the black hair tie, you can't even see because the underside of that faux fur is black already. And I know I'm jabbering on. So we're just gonna keep single crocheting. I'm trying to do it. Oh no, I started working with my tail. Okay, so time to undo those last couple of stitches. There we go. My bad. And I'll show you what to do when you mess up. So basically you unravel it until you get back to where your tail is a part of your work. That was my bad. I get to ramble it on and I'm not even sure what I'm doing. There we are. I know what I'm doing. I just get distracted very easily. 
All right, let's keep single crocheting. And again, every like six to 10 stitches, however you want to do it, whatever you feel comfortable with, just kind of tug and tug. I do it, I tug the tail first and then I tug the main body and that works out well for me. We're still going around. I can't give you like the exact amount of single crochets that I do whenever I do any of these, I've yet to count because they're all different. Imagine if you have a bunch of used hair ties or your hair ties are just slightly larger or slightly smaller. The things that I do for these hair ties are gonna be significantly smaller than what I would do for the jumbo. So that's why I'm not giving precise measurements for this specific type. Getting close, you only have a little bit left here. And again, we're not gonna wanna tug it so tight that it's gonna start bunching up on itself because that is not what we want it to look like. But basically, I'm kinda just tugging and tugging and letting it do that. We're gonna keep going and going and going. And I like to keep my tail, and I like to stretch it first before I cut my tail. That way, it'll be all bunched up in the center and it won't come undone. That's how I like to do it. We're getting really close. Not so tight that it's gonna be done. And this is the part where I'd start doing it every like three stitches, every two to three stitches. I pull on it and kind of measure it to make sure and see what's going on. So let's tug and tug. We only have maybe another 10 single crochet. I just keep going until it looks right, essentially. Whatever you want it to look like, that's what's right. And then I'll show you how I cut the tail so that the actual fur doesn't spray out as much as it does on other yarns. I like this one because this one's fur actually doesn't go everywhere when you cut the end of it. That's what my big issue with these velvet yarns is when you cut it, the ends just fray apart. They're so frayable. It's awful. All right, I think we're down to like the last couple of stitches actually. One, two, and three until I can't see the pink is when I go. So I can still see a little bit of the pink. Let's go a little bit more. One, two, tug and tug. And when it relaxes, if I can still see the pink, I'm gonna do another two stitches, I think. So one, whoop. it doesn't wanna latch. There we go, and two. It gets harder when you get close to the end here. Tug, tug. I'm gonna do another two, I think, and then I think I'm gonna be done. I keep saying that, but I keep needing to do a couple more. All right, so here we're back at our beginning, and I'm gonna put another single crochet in there, but we're pretty much back at our beginning, so I'm gonna try to find what our stitch is. You can kind of see some braiding if you look really closely, but what I wind up doing, honestly, is just taking my hook and stabbing it through whatever the closest one is. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to slip stitch. And that's it. So here, what I like to do with my yarn here is what I did earlier. Where's my scissors? I'll use those ones. I did earlier with my Santa. If you haven't seen that, I take the braided part of the yarn and I'm going to hold my faux fur part down here. I'm going to put my yarn in my scissors right there and I'm just going to snip it. And that way, whenever I pull it apart, very little of that faux fur is actually going to come off but i do like to peel it just to make sure that it's not just sitting around and then i'll throw that away so now what i like to do is i'm going to pull my tail and let that be pulled like so and what i like to do with this tail is i'm going to pull my pull my piece and let my tail go in as much as it wants to this gets to be pulled there and we're going to actually chop that one off pretty close to where you can't see it anymore in the little guy there. We're going to take our darning needle and we're going to attach it to the other side and we're going to take the threaded ends, pinch them together and push that towards the eye. It makes it a lot easier to try to thread that. And what we're going to do is try to find the stitches. 
So I'm going to take my darning needle and it's a lot easier to do this when you have your tail only be about an inch out. It's more likely to fall out, but it's a lot easier to get it through these stitches, let me tell you. So I'm gonna work my darning needle through about an inch of the piece right here. And I'm gonna pull and tug and tug and tug and tug until it's a piece of the work. I like to try to go at least halfway with my other tail. That way it's nice and snug and hidden so you cannot see it. So again, repeat, ah, repeat and pull. I find that this is the easiest way to do this. And go back in from once you came and go through all of your stitches. Make sure you're going through the stitches. If you can see your darning needle on the other side, then you did not go through the center. Oh, and there we go. That is about center. And what I like to do here is what I did before with the other one. We're just going to give it a little snip. These scissors are not sharp at all because I ended up cutting something I shouldn't have with it. Story of my life. And that's pretty much it for the faux fur little scrunchie. In next week's video, we're going to show how to do the gnome. I know I'm really late and we're not actually getting it done by Christmas, but it'll be perfectly in time for next Christmas. It's fine. I have been so crazy with Christmas and everything that's going on that I just don't know. I, I can't keep track of everything. I opened myself to custom orders on Facebook Marketplace for a bunch of like characters and stuff that I crochet because I'm trying to save up for a new MacBook for editing. Everything's on my phone right now and um that was not maybe the best idea because I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do anything on my YouTube channel. So I've been crazy busy. I love how this looks. It's nice and thick, which is why I don't do the scrunchiness with the faux fur. I think this is full enough and it works on its own. In the next week, we're going to do the gnome and then I'm also going to do this cute velvet scrunchie. I'm really excited about it. This one was just such a quick project that I wanted to get it out there in case somebody wanted to do it for the winter. It's such a cute little pattern. I love it. I have not tried balling this yarn, but I don't know if anybody else has done that with the fur of the moment yarn. Let me know if you've balled it because I'm really worried about it like getting pressed down and not being as fluffy anymore. Let me know if you've done that and pretty much stay tuned for future uploads. I am now chilled down since Christmas is pretty much upon us for the uh, custom orders. I did save a little bit of money towards the MacBook fund, so that's exciting. Yay. And I'm very happy that you joined us. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for being a, uh, probably a subscriber and for being a viewer of our channel. Thank you so much. Um, if you're interested in this channel, we do have a Patreon, we have PayPal links, we have stuff like that, which will help me towards my MacBook fund and making more patterns like this if you are interested. I will have a printable PDF for this down below for both the scrunchie and the faux fur version, so stay tuned for that. It'll be linked down below. There's going to be one PDF so that you can get both of them there, so if you're really eager to get on that, you can do that with this and uh, do all the things like going to our Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. We're going to be doing a giveaway soon, so stay tuned for that and be subscribe and hit the little bell so you can be notified when that happens. All right. Until next time. Bye.